couple weeks ago, you let us know that you were going to be heading to the factory. And now that you're back. New factory. New factory. Yeah, the new factory in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. First of all, how was, uh, how was the travel to get there? It's, uh, it's exhausting. <laughs> So I flew to I flew from Seattle to Istanbul, Istanbul, and then I flew from Istanbul to Astana. It's, a, it's the capital of uh, Kazakhstan, and uh, Yegor, our factory manager in Kazakhstan, picked me up, and we drove uh, 500 kilometers from Astana to Petropavlovsk through the steppes. Just <laughs> nothing around, just flat land. It was okay compared to. My way, way back. Igor, he read some uh, weather forecast and he said it's going to be snowing. And in Kazakhstan, because it's like flats, the winds are very strong. So when it's snowing, the roads are quickly covered with snow, so they just shut it. Yeah. So he said that we are risking not to get from Petropavlovsk back to Astana. So I took a flight from Petropavlovsk to Astana. But then I had to stay in Astana for like 10 hours. And then I flew from Astana to Istanbul. And I had uh, a layover over eight hours. <laughs> and then I flew from Istanbul back to Seattle. So overall, I calculated it took me like 45 hours. It's a little complicated. Maybe, maybe there are better ways to to go to Peter Paul's. I'll, I'll explore <laughs> for my next trip, yeah. Aside from the long journey to get there, uh, you had mentioned that you were very impressed with what you witnessed and saw when you yeah, arrived. Yes, yes. Uh, I think we have uh, all reasons to celebrate. Which I suggest we'll do right now. Okay. What is that? And this is called uh, kumis. It's a mare milk. Is it cold? Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you want me to get sick on film? Yeah, yeah, I know. So for people of uh, Irbit <laughs> who made this happen, Oh my gosh, that's different. It's not bad. <laughs> hey, this is horse milk. Mm hmm 100%. That's different. It's not bad. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wanted to bring some horse meat, but this would have been a little, so I, I just ate it. <laughs> uh. So, yes, I, I'm, I'm very excited by, <clears throat> by, by the fact that uh, we did it. And actually, after seeing it with uh, my own eyes, I uh, realized that we totally underappreciated uh, what our guys uh, did absolutely huge amount of work put into organizing this uh, assembly facility. So there were three key people who were sent to Kazakhstan and who, who were responsible for setting up this uh, shop. Uh, <coughs> currently we have uh, 16 people five in the office and uh, 11 people on the floor and of uh, those 11, five are from Irbit and six workers who will be uh, hired locally. They, they can do a, probably four to five uh, uh, bikes a day currently. What, what, what uh, needs to be understood is that uh, it, it's totally new assembly and <coughs> Uh, it happened not just because of the guys uh, who went there, but the guys who stayed in Irbit and, uh, for instance, our engineers. Almost all pictures are made anew. 
So they were yeah. designed and built and moved to Kazakhstan and set up. We, as a matter of fact, we brought very few uh, pieces, old pieces of equipment, uh, but almost none of the fixtures. We have an engineer whose name is Ivan, Ivan Silivanov, and he, he basically did it single-handedly. Not so only he designed it, but he actually that was going to be my question. So he not only designed it. it, but he built it for you guys. Yeah, like uh, this uh, uh, bike uh, test bench. Mm -hmm. it's, to it's, run in the whole bike? It, to, to, to run the whole bike, which has been uh, set up in Kazakhstan. Yeah. Uh, he made it himself, like literally. At the beginning of this, you said back then that it might not be our final resting place so i mean <laughs> see uh we're in a situation when it's uh, easier to plan for 10 years than for three months like if you location. no in general like if it's easier to set uh, some goals for two, 10 years from now and kind of set the path but it's totally impossible to predict what's going to happen in three months right uh so what I can tell that we definitely are in Kazakhstan for the next three months. But uh, if we're going to be in Kazakhstan five years from now, I don't know. With the completion of this phase of uh, relocation, then we should uh, and can start uh, planning for a little further away. And uh, uh, I can see us staying in uh, Kazakhstan for a long period of time. And this is kind of a decision that I feel we need to uh, make rather soon. But uh, in general, as I said, uh, the setup, uh, I like it a lot. Uh, it doesn't feel like home yet, if, if you know yeah. what I mean. I think we could uh, make it feel this way. We just, we just need some time to get used to all this new environment, new new walls, you know. <laughs> right. I like the guy who assembles engines very much. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is how I would set up my old shop. It all has its own place. Like, it's clean. Yeah. Minimum tools, only what he needs. Really, really nice. And I, I think they, <clears throat> the workers there, they, they feel different because everything is new. Everything is nice, you, like new tools, new fixtures, uh, new shelves, uh, new lights. Uh, they say, oh, it's a little dark here. Next day uh, he gets the light, uh, the lamp, and uh, himself or somebody put it on. And now we have just working assembly, uh, which can produce the amount of uh, bikes we sell. Uh, if we are to learn something from our experience uh, during the past uh, 10 months or 8 months, is, uh, the, the, the major thing is that uh, it all can change very quickly. So we need to be prepared. We need to have uh, our plan B, plan C, plan D, uh, and so on and so far. So basically our, our operational uh, mode right now is stabilized in the current uh, environment to, right. to become more efficient in the current one environment but uh, okay. in parallel get prepared if the environment will change to worse because there are frames body parts you're right this 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 is something we need to think about so th this kind of a parallel to what i'm uh, talking when I'm mentioning uh, contingency plans. So now that you've been there and you've got to look around, what, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing Euro uh, uh, now, the new factory in Kazakhstan? Uh, logistics. Plain and simple. Logistics is disaster. And that's, uh, that's true for import and export? Right? It's both in and out, yes. Um, it's not just because we are in Kazakhstan, it's just uh, because uh, uh, anything which uh, have to go, have, have to cross Russia or China is total disaster. 
Uh, and the, the only reliable uh, way of transportation right now is the air. But uh, land transportation or ocean transportation is very, very, very bad. Uh, stuff which is coming by land from, from Asia, I think everybody read about it, or at least or something about uh, lockdowns in China. For instance, we have shipment uh, uh, from Taiwan, which we ship uh, to China, hoping to uh, move it across China to Kazakhstan. Yeah. Uh, and it's been like almost two and a half months. Uh, and as far as uh, transportation by trucks, so uh, there is a kind of a truck war between the European Union and Russia. Mm -hmm. So they would not al al allow, allow uh, trucks to go inside the territories. <laughs> you need to find a, a truck with Kazakhstan license plate. So you, you can go, uh, you can cross both Russia and European Union, yeah. which is very difficult and very expensive because the majority of Kazakhstan licensed trucks are working for Asian direction, China mostly. Yeah. And they don't want to get truck from China and send it to Europe because it can't find some uh, freight, to, freight come to, come to, to bring back, yeah. yes. Or uh, you utilize uh, local t trucking companies, but the, 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 the cargo needs to be reloaded on border. So you send a truck, it's, it stops at the uh, border between uh, Russia, um, Belarus and the European Union, wait for truck coming from the European Union, they exchange the cargo and they yeah. go back. And it could take many, many days. And unfortunately, it's very unpredictable. So we're missing uh, bookings uh, from European ports, things like this. It, uh, and of course, we put, uh, put a very big uh, extra load on our finances, of course, because we need to finance much, much longer uh, uh, turnarounds uh, compared to what we used to. It's very hard to plan around that. Yeah, I mean, you you, you plan the tra that a tracking company would pick uh, the bikes on a certain date. So you build up the schedule, you book the container ship, and then the truck is late because he, he would uh, he would stop. And they book a next vessel, the truck leaves the factory in Kazakhstan, and they miss this vessel too because it got stuck on the way to Europe. Trying very hard to find more reliable ways to move our cargo, like paying for trucks with Kazakhstan <laughs> license plates, yeah. for instance. Or as far as the uh, infrastructure to, to support uh, small uh, manufacturing uh, like ourselves is uh, kind of not very good, quite frankly, in Kazakhstan still. Uh, it, it may change because <clears throat> from what we hear and see uh, quite a few companies are relocating to Kazakhstan so I expect it will uh, uh, all the service industry which support manufacturing will, will develop quickly yes. well what's what's funny is that uh, uh, they're saying they're saying that uh, over 300 uh, companies uh, uh, expressed uh, interest to, to relocate from Russia to Kazakhstan and they are bringing the examples and we are the first one. So you in general your takeaway from your trip is over overall very positive. I mean it's done. Yeah. That that's my feeling. It's, it's it, this this uh, mission is accomplished. I wish we never had to do this. So it's kind of a bit of sweet, you know. The smooth is already kind of think of the past. <laughs> we need to uh, be worried about the future uh, and think about it. But it's done, it's good, uh, we are operational. Uh, we ship, uh, we build and ship bikes, we build and ship parts. Uh, but there are still a lot of things uh, uh, we need to take care of to, to feel uh, ourselves uh, more comfortable in the circumstances circumstances that we are 
Ian right now. So were the guys happy to see you? Uh, when they, you arrived, or were they like, "Oh man, the boss is here"? No, no, I, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, get this feeling. <laughs> it was important for me to show up there, of course, and. Uh, I don't know if I'll, if, uh, I'll survive <laughs> uh, health-wise <laughs> if I'll be uh, traveling to Kazakhstan as frequently as I uh, did uh, with Urban, depending on the weather in Kazakhstan. Well, I appreciate you debriefing me on the trip. I'm sure somebody will enjoy it that watches it. All right. You, you want some more? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you.